There we go. Got it. Welcome into the Bogey Bro Banter. Thank you, Hunter. The banter of Bogey Bros. I didn't realize you went with the larger coffee today. Wow. Dang, you dude. Rough it. morning, I huh? needed it. I, it was a rough it. night, rough morning all around. But <sighs> let's talk about something that's not rough. Our <laughs> oh, sponsor today. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Manscaped. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends over at Manscaped, leaders in below-the-waist grooming. It's back to school time, and we want to make sure you pack the essentials to have your best year yet. The Manscaped fourth-generation performance package is just that. Be ready for whatever ever in your da- daily schedule this year. It's the perfect package for your package and includes the brand new lawnmower 4.0. Fellas, go for a valedictorian of ball trimming this year and join the 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com and using the code BANTER20 to get 20% off and free shipping. Now, school's back and the performance package 4.0 from Manscaped is here to teach the boys lessons on male hygiene. Inside, you'll find the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop reviver, ball crop reviver, ball toner, plus two free gifts, the performance boxer briefs and the shed travel bag. I noticed we went to Charleston, I believe it was mm-hmm. Connor was using the shed travel bag. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure luxurious. one of us every day have the boxers on at some point. It's luxurious. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing the boxers right I now. I that is well. crazy. Two out of three. Do you have them? No. Two for three. I just, I washed them. Dang. Oh, uh, the boxers yeah. are very nice. I mm-hmm. At this point, I have like... Five pair. I have four. I think I've got four. Maybe I have four, because we we should all have the same amount. <laughs> I think we all. Have um, and I wear them probably four days a week. Oh, I choose them over pretty much any other box I, I've ever I worn. Do, I, do I definitely well. choose them. They're very nice. Yeah. And the lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor and a new fu- new multifunction on-off switch that can engage a travel lock and gives you the ability to turn on the 4,000K LED spotlight on and off when you need for a more precise shave. And on top of all that. It's waterproof as well. It also comes with a weed whacker, like I had said, which chops your worst weeds up top in both your new, new nose and ear. That was tough. The weed whacker is also waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor. Get wrecked. Powered by 360 degree rotary dual blades. It's actually, don't get wrecked because it's it perfect for your delicate hold. It won't. You cannot get wrecked. And that's safe. the next thing I was about to say. It has pr- proprietary skin safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, tugs, and you getting wrecked in those delicate holes. <laughs> 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 that one came out a lot different than I meant to, but get 20% off and free shipping with the code BANTER20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code BANTER20 at manscaped.com. This You're year, graduate with a degree in clean balls I from Manscaped. Your balls will back you. To, I haven't gone back to school and this is the third year in a row i haven't gone back to school so now you can't yep. you become the valedictorian a clean body nice whenever i hear whenever i hear about um like people starting class and stuff like that it just gives me anxiety why is that just because i think about how i feel when it like how i Connor's felt still whenever in school. i that is go, true Connor's i'm not in, in it <laughs> but uh how i felt whenever it's like oh it's like a couple weeks before classes and it's just that like i just want to run I just want usually I how I felt it. every year before classes start. I just wanted to run as far as I could into the woods and stay there and classes not let anyone like ever find and me. College? Every my entire Dude, I, life, I love class. I loved it. Well, college, I was all online, so like I never stopped school. Yeah, because like yeah. that, I was. If I wouldn't have switched my major, I would have graduated in two years. I was. I was online through the summer too, but then high school, I love going back to school. I was always counting down the days to go back to college. I mean, my. Last year of school, when I knew I was moving off campus with my buddies, like I and I, I did not like my job that summer either. I mean, I was literally marking the days off of my calendar. Well, you know what? You're right. Because usually, whenever I, usually I would really regret it, but then as soon as I got back on campus, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, like this is this is so fun." Like I I love being on campus. I just hated, and I like my classes too. I just hate school. I just hate school. I think it's be- all in my head. Like I it's went not back actually to how bad it is in your head. It is. In I my recently head. went back to school. Trying to learn some stuff about SEO for our site. This guy is started taking a bunch of. On- well, I didn't actually take like online classes, but you took like online courses. Not even. I just like YouTube. You read some that, sh- oh, YouTube and yeah. blogs, but I took out YouTube my University. old um, my old uh, one of the notebooks I never used in college, but yeah. I bought to use in college. Wrote notes and, and started stuff. writing notes. And I was mm, like, man, this guy is a scholar. This feels good. I've got a YouTube degree in a lot of things. Yeah, it feels good. I mean, I, it's been a long time since I've like sat down and took notes, you know, but I'm like, this stuff I want to like be able to reference. And I don't want to have to like go through the archives and find these mm-hmm. videos and stuff again. So I'm going to just note it up. I mean, Dang. I learned how to play disc golf on YouTube and here I am. So I guess that YouTube That's true. is important. True. You're a millionaire now because of disc golf. I, that, that would be so funny. Should two we, extra zeros. Should we start making a... <laughs> trillion. Should, should we actually start making like um, like how many how much we make an episode jokes like they do on... I'm part of my take. take. Should be like, yeah, Hunter and I each make 20 grand an episode. Connor makes 10. 
it would be funny per, if uh, per podcast episode. <laughs> if, we, if we ever had a guest and we like somehow could like slide them a piece of paper and like be like well, I don't want to say it publicly but like this how much we an episode and like on it we just write like look shocked when you open this yeah. and you're like wow <laughs> and slide it back to us that's that'd funny. be funny to get the rumor bill I watched him. I was watching a sometimes um, Hunter buys us pizza yeah <laughs> yeah he does that is awesome so that's I don't, huge yeah I don't there is no there is no way that there could be a better place to work than here we have so much fun Hunter bought me coffee this morning I did that um, you actually paid me back, so I didn't. But you got I didn't me. Intend, I didn't want you to. Pay I me know back. you didn't. I know you didn't. But I, I wanted you to, to know that I appreciated. When it. When I pulled up to Third Wave, or like I was headed there, and my mind today was Thursday, and wondering Donut was going to be there, mm. and I was bringing. Donuts. It did feel like a Dang. Thursday today, didn't it? I was bringing. Donuts. I thought it was Gosh, Thursday. Man. I thought it was Thursday but today as well. It wasn't there, so I didn't bring donuts. It's not Thursday. That's the thing. Hey, let me. Because we're here recording. I want to say something. And. First of all, let me show you. I have I have a huge, large amount of self awareness. Okay, just let you know, I'm very a very self aware guy. So I I know that if the moment that I say that I haven't been sleeping very much this week, I know that I'm like I'm obviously talking to people who have been getting a lot less sleep. It's than like me. what I always say. Not me anymore. If your ankle hurts and I have a broken arm. Your ankle still hurts. That's wow, yeah, dude. Very that good was point. very mature. That was very mature. I appreciate very mature. That. Very so, good Hunter, point. I know that you have been. <laughs> He's a father you, of one. You have been so. tending to a screaming human animal in your house for the past many weeks. <laughs> human animal, um, pretty much. <laughs> but whenever we were, so we were shooting a trick shot last Friday, mm-hmm. and while we were standing there, I was standing beside my phone that was on a tripod. And I had to stand there behind the object we were trying to hit. Trevor was trying to throw discs at and swat them to keep them from hitting my my phone because it was literally directly behind the object. So I had to stand there very alert, swatting discs, and um, which meant that I couldn't swat at my legs. And the whole time I was standing there, I just proceeded to get eaten and eaten and eaten by an, by bug animals. Close. And so everything's to the point to where it's animal. literally all the way up my inner thighs, Ooh. like into manscape territory. Yes, Ooh. like I don't. I'm never wearing short shorts again. That's not true. I'm already wearing them. But like, it was it was bad. I, and they're like from me holding my arms up. They were I have bites all around my armpits Dang. and like onto my chest. I don't know how it happened. You're probably standing on like a chigger pit or whatever. Yeah. I called. guess I was. But nest. That's this what I meant whole to say. this whole week, I like. Every single night has just been miserable because I wake up They're and good. literally both my legs are in the air and I'm just scratching my <laughs> legs like this. That's how I wake up in the middle of the night every night and it's just miserable. I take I've taken Benadryl before I've gone to bed every night. Just hasn't Have done you the put magic. Benadryl lotion on it. No. Or uh, calamine lotion. Oh, I yeah, haven't. That's, that's the, that's I used stop. to I used to have Benadryl lotion. Zanfil. I think I took it home, but that'll yeah, help dude. too. Sandfield was goaded. I might, I might need to go for that. The hard thing is that like I didn't get to try it because like I, I've never. I don't think I'm allergic to poison oak or poison ivy, but when I had that like one rash that yeah. the doctor basically just, the doctor called it contact dermatitis, which basically just means you touched something mm-hmm. to make yeah. you itch, which who knows what it was. Um, I rubbed Sandfield on it, thinking, oh, this is before I went to the doctor because I was like, I tried um, Benadryl, I tried like something else, and nothing was touching. I was like. This must be poison ivy. Like this must mm, be it. It wasn't. Rubbed it on there. Did nothing. Yeah, that's what. That's like, a dang. Zanfeld just dries it Cause out. Because it basically, when you read on the Zanfeld thing, like, it's like if you, if it, if you aren't fully like no more itching in like ten minutes or something like that, it's like apply again. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. This it, thing expects it just, itself to work. It just so dries fast. it out so fast. That stuff is crazy. Yeah, well, because that's how like poison ivy and poison oak works. It's is the, oils. the oils. Yeah, but yeah. it said it works on like mosquito bites and stuff too. The hard thing is yeah, that it's not like it's like. All the way up my legs, so like I would have to literally cover my legs. Well, you like make it into a paste and you basically bathe with it. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, you scrub yourself with it. I gotta figure something out because I like it. It, I'm in pain. I'm surprised. <laughs> usually, like I've I've gotten lit up by those a few times in the past few weeks, but I usually have about two bad nights where I like wake up at least once, have to like scratch myself for what it seems like mm-hmm. 20 minutes, and then go back to sleep. But that's that's about it. Usually, I get about two nights of it, and then I'm good. But it's been a long time since I've had chigger bites. They're the but worst. When you I get think them, I got them the same. I think I got them the same exact time last year. Probably. I think it's because it's it about right at the end time. of the summer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I went. Yeah, I, I've been walking through a lot of tall grass on disc golf courses, and that's where I get them. Yeah. That's 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 the, the tough spot. That's what I got. I'm pretty sure it's how I got Alpha Gal. 
Some yeah. chicken triggers. Because hmm. I was what is so the scientific name for them. Does anybody know? Is it not chiggers? They're called chiggers. Surely not. Did we, I think we've already looked this up before. I mean, on the medicine it says chiggers. Yeah, I mean they're really? they're known as is, chiggers, a they? tiny mite. So they're whose parasitic larva yeah. live on on or under the skin of a warm blooded animal. Yeah, they're they're in the mite family. Another term for chiggo. Mid eighteenth century variant. So weird. Okay. I mean, it's a dictionary definition. Yeah. Or, I mean, if you want to call it a tiny mite. I, I don't know. I got a lot of tiny mite bites. I guess. Yeah, we got a, ton, a, lot, of, a lot of mite <laughs> tiny, bites. Tiny mite bites. A lot of mite bites. Um, I would present a topic, but I'm dead. I'm. <laughs> you're staring at a dead man right now. I'm a ghost. I, oh, Hunter, I've got, I wanted to say something. Do you mind if I say something to you? No, you go for it. In this office, we have to ask permission to talk to Hunter. Yeah. Um, It's whoever has the, the talking call. My liege. Uh, yes. So I was thinking, I was thinking, Hunter. Now that like, now that we're both like truck owners, like, mm-hmm. would you want to? Oh, do you want to like hang out sometime? Just like, a whenever, man. I'm still waiting to go fishing. Heck yeah! I bought my fishing license and I haven't used it. Where? Let's it let's go. Can we, let's go on Sunday. Okay. Possibly. Well, Liz might be going to the um, Bible study Sunday. Which means exactly. I'll have Luca. Exactly. Yeah. Welcome to the club. You put him in that stroller. You be I fishing. should put him in the stroller. If you if you know somewhere I can take him on like a on a path. <laughs> yeah. Fish uh, from a path. Okay. The well, last time. The last. Let me explain to you. The last time. Well, I let went me, let's fishing. Whoa, 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 okay. whoa. Let me just explain. Well, I just it. want you to give context to people watching so they feel a little bit more. So like the, they understand what context. I'm going to give all the context. Okay. Good. The last time. Um, this is my point of view. The I'm last sorry. time I was going to go fishing with Connor and our friend Logan. I, I I'm gonna have Brooks with me, so I'm just planning on strapping him to the front of me. I mean that's that's pretty reasonable, and we're gonna like they say to meet them downtown, and they had gotten there like probably half hour before I did. So I get downtown, I'm getting like all set up, and Connor calls me. He's like, "Hey, like, how mobile are you?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Was I it mean, on like the Blackwater Creek Trail?" No, no, it was like, like we know where the, the river, fountain is. Basically. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like down there, so you had to like cross the train tracks and like yeah. scale down and a I, cliff. Yeah, I was like, well, he Brooks is strapped to me, so like I'm very mobile. And then he's like, okay, and I hang up. And then he calls me. I call him again to ask where he is. After I was like all set up, and he's like, yeah, we're gonna go somewhere else because like we think you might die like trying to get down there with Brooks, <laughs> and like he might break your fall. Um. So we that's just, just you know, just as a thoughtful. father, just know that that's the kind of fishing well, spot like, that Connor may and try to. Entice what I'm saying you is like the the only, one time, <laughs> the only fishing spot I'm aware of that I'm like, there's not Luca very good could probably spots here. survive here is like at Independence Park. Oh, that's a good. We place. can like just push. Up the, I thought about doing that, but Independence Park yet. is like 45 minutes from my house. It's a ways. It's a waste. Yeah, I guess you're good. Well, there used to be good fish in there because like my uncle used to own it. It used to be really good fish. Mm-hmm. Great fish, but when he like was in the process of like donating it to um or selling it or whatever, however it happened to Bedford Parks and Rec, yeah, he started letting people just like fish there, whoever. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't think everyone caught him released okay. because like when I went back and fished, like as it was like being built before, yeah. like as the disc golf course, everything was being built before it was publicly opened. Fishing was nowhere near as good. Gotcha. Because like some of the biggest bass I ever caught were in that little really? pond. Really? Yeah, but it was because like they just less. They they're just like no competition for them. You just, you it just, was just whacking it fat was, donks out there. Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was also like some uh, grass eating carp that he put in that were massive. Oh cool. But I don't know if any of that's there anymore. Yeah, I w- I've, I've wanted to now go there. Now I think it's overfished. Basically, just to let you know what I do. Like whenever I'm sitting on the toilet now. Is I I downloaded Google Maps because Google Maps is a lot better than this than, that, than Apple Maps, and I just have it on like the regular view, and I just zoom in all around Lynchburg and just look for water. There is uh, you, do you know um, you don't watch much professional fishing? N- not no, no, okay. I don't. Oh, there's this professional fisherman called David named David Dudley. Uh huh. He lives towards Appomattox between mm-hmm. here and Appomattox, and he has a farm. That he's like fully stocked his pond on. Dang. Um, and then my dad is really good friends with his brother. And the farm is like, a, um, it's like for, I forget what it is, but it's like a kid's camp type thing where oh, cool. basically you're only allowed to fish the pond if you bring your kid with you. Because mm-hmm. like supposed to like help. 
I, I forget what the whole purpose behind, but that was bonding his whole goal. Yeah, like fa- fatherly bonding. I don't know, but some crap Stupid. like that. Um, <laughs> but anyways, like, so you couldn't. You're supposed to bring your son or daughter or whoever with you to fish. Mom or dad, whoever brings a kid to fish. But he had told since my dad was friends with his brother, he told us we could fish there whenever. Oh, this cool. has been years ago. But I know it still exists, mm-hmm. and I know it's crazy good fishing because like he stocked yeah, it of yeah, like yeah. everything. Like he fishes it all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's another option. I could that's try to I could sweet. try to hit him up and figure it out because I know that's like family friendly, like accessible. So I'm sure that it's not like because when to fish at like if you fish off the Blackwater Creek Trail on the I'm assuming Blackwater Creek, um, you're like the trail's nice, but then to get down to the creek, you always are like it's sketchy. Yeah. Like there's no, there's very, very few sketchy. like, oh, here's a nice little path down to the water. Yeah. It's like, here's a cliff. There's a decent, if you go it. down, if you go down the Blackwater Creek Trail across like the, the bridge, like in downtown, like near the love sign, mm-hmm. then there's a, to get, once you pass the wooden bridge immediately to your left, there's a pretty good like path to go down and then fish right there is actually a really good spot. Um, But I also got permission to fish at Lake Vista. Um, and apparently if you fish on the house side, not the condo side of the lake, cause they're like two different lakes, mm-hmm. there's like really good fishing there because Gabby's boss is, uh, lives there. My grandparents live in Lake And it, you have to be like, oh, okay, well there you go. So I'm, so I want to try there. Also, there's never anyone patrolling it. Yeah. So, cause I run there frequently. Gotcha. Then, gotcha. I mean, I've fished there a few times. Mm-hmm. You're not really, like you said, you're not supposed to, but like no one's ever out there fishing there. And I know multiple people that live there. Well, at that time, I did. I know for a fact. But, I mean, who's going to call a game warden? I know yeah. for a fact when I lived there that I would see some big old fish swimming in the shallow waters. Like, you would just see them lurking down there. We should Maybe we should try there because I feel like that's pretty accessible. They were, they were lurking, Yeah, bro. there's a good trail all the way around it. You know what's crazy? I don't know. You definitely actually never saw it because there would be no reason for you to. But when I was running and I was built up to 10 miles, I had to, like, find sneaky paths to get 10 miles in. Where, yeah. because like from for me to run from my house to there's like a neighborhood, um, across from Third Wave up here, and the end of that neighborhood, if I ran straight from my house, was like only a little, like around four miles. So I needed to find a way to add an extra mile basically mm-hmm. to there. So what I'd have to do is when I'd run up instead of turning onto Graves Mill, mm-hmm. um, yeah, instead of turning onto Graves Mill, I'd have to run farther up this hill, uh, like I'm going to Colonial Hills kind of from the back way in Lake Vista, yeah. uh, f- run farther up that hill and then turn into one of the neighborhoods up there. Okay. And then once I turned to one of the neighborhoods up there, I would run all the way down this big hill and then turn to another neighborhood and halfway into that neighborhood and in between two houses, there was a small path. And this small path, I, you'd run down this path. It was like had bricks on it. You'd run down this path and then there was a narrow bridge that was like the width of this table that went across the lake. It was like where the lake like turned into a stream and went across it and then just straight up another person's yard. And then at that point, um, it like was in another neighborhood across the lake and then it would spit you out like prior to Vista center drive where like Western ways and stuff is interesting. So that's what I would have to do. Sneak but back way. when you go that way, you sneak through those two yards and you pop up as soon as you pop up into this cul-de-sac massive playground. Huh? Yeah, it's pretty sick playground. Yeah, I never That's ran cool. All the way back there. And like I said, that told that to my wife. I told it to Liz or my mom, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we take uh, Lila to that playground all the time." I was like, "How did I never know this playground was here?" It was just in a cul-de-sac. It's like house, 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 and then instead of a house, it's just a huge playground. There's so many back neighborhoods around here that like you just don't yeah. see. Like you only really see the ones that are immediately off the main roads, and even some of those you don't see. But there's just a lot of just back areas, yeah. and like you only you you only will see them from like across another back neighborhood like looking like there's no main roads well that's what when i started running through like the lake vista that back area um when i started running through there i learned so much more about those back streets because i'd be like true i would try to map it out before i left my house of like how am i getting eight miles in today or how am i getting however many miles and like figure out where i wanted to turn around that and then i had to like just look at the map and be like that's how i found that path is like i zoomed in on the map and i was like on the running map it showed me trails and it said there was this trail, but like I could tell it was just ha- there was four houses and it said the trail was between them. Mm. I was like, there's no shot that that's real. So I went on Google Maps and zoomed in. I was like, there's a little footbridge if it's still there. And so I just sent it. And sure enough, that's fun. It hmm. was there. 
It was a very it was very cool. The Exploration first time I ran it is exciting when you're running. The first time I ran it, it made the run feel so short because yeah. I was like trying to find something that the whole time. So fun. Second time I ran it, didn't work because I already knew it was there. <laughs> Honestly, I think that would be, man, that would be an interesting. Okay, think about this for a Foundation Nation video or something. Maybe we do it on a trail, or maybe we do it just in Lynchburg. But I think we'd probably be better. To, but we just you just are blindfolded and like placed somewhere, and you have to just find your way out of it using nothing. Like you go, you go to. We, what do you we, mean out of it? Like back to a, a certain place, like back to familiarity, back to where you know where you are. I think. Mm. It, I mean, I, in Lynchburg, there's probably nowhere. Well. I wouldn't say there's nowhere we could we could drop each there's other. There's definitely places, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if so you just went into like took someone up Candler's Mountain, just dropped them in the woods. But that's, but you'd I'm have true. no idea that's what woods I you're think in. It would, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it'd be so fascinating. Like, I don't think it would because the issue is if you dropped us too remote, we would just end up on someone's property. Like, if you just drop me in the woods near Camp Hideaway, well, there's houses all around, and most of those houses are not fans of people. Well, you could mm. wouldn't you could drop them on a road then or a street somewhere. That they probably wouldn't know where they were. And like it would be like you just have to make it back to a certain checkpoint and you don't have a car. Yes, it's just you're running. You're just running. I think that'd be, I think it, I love the idea of like just like you're blindfolded and you have no reason to know where you are in. We can even put you in the back of our, our van. Yeah. That's so fun. Kidnapping um, simulator. I mean, that would be, thing, that's wild. That's a wild idea. The crazy thing about Lynchburg is that like you'll be driving down a, like a main road and you'd be like, oh, this is kind of a crappy area. And then you take like one little turn down a what looks like just a random road, and then you're like, "Oh my gosh! Like, what are all these nice houses doing here?" Yeah, it's like it's if you there's like back behind Peaks View back there. Yeah, back that yeah. way. There's is a, that's kind of like a spot like that where it's mm-hmm. like all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, there's a lot of nice houses back here." Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen the guy on TikTok that he like people comment what he has to find, and he'll like leave his house, so it'll be like a woman wearing a purple shirt. And he'll leave his house and run. And like it's just a time lapse of him running until he finds someone wearing a purple shirt. And then he shows how long he had run to find it. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's like a mile and a half. Like but, a, but one time someone had something very specific. It was like a type of car or something. And he ran away from his house. And it was like almost eight miles before he found it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then he found it and showed his watch. And it was eight miles. And all of a sudden, I was like, you have to run eight miles home yeah. now. Like, that sucks. But that's the TikToks bizarre. are fascinating. They that, pop up on my For You page all the time. That's interesting. That's like crazy. a live scavenger hunt. Yeah, like people just comment and then he just picks one of the I comments feel, and like I, tries to go find it. Dang. I feel like this, the that like there was a trend going on on social media for a long time there where people were just like walking around on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. Like there was like people that live streamed real life. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of gone away a little bit. Because a lot of people would have like the laptop, like they had like a, a strap setup. with a laptop yeah. and like their camera mm-hmm. attached to it. Yeah, wild and it was a very weird trend that was going on for a while. Yeah, there. I think I don't. I never understood it. I guess people. I guess people like the idea that they could like comment or donate and get somebody to do something in real life, like they had control over somebody, or maybe they just didn't like their life and they wanted to watch somebody else's. I mean, that's how the internet is. So. Yeah, I saw some YouTube videos yesterday. Ooh. Whenever I was searching for something. ideas for Foundation Nation. And I saw this girl whose channel is she like does budget builds in Sims, dude. Sims is cool. I never Sims really got so it. Fun. I never really got into Sims. Like I just didn't play it heavily. But I like, didn't watch it. I just saw the video. It's a cool. It's a cool oh, it game. got me into. That's funny um, though. Like an extra. I forget layer. how I got <laughs> Sims. I I definitely got it for free. I think I was it was one summer in high school, and I was just looking for games that download for free, mm-hmm. like from UTorrent or whatever, and um. Don't recommend that. Um, <laughs> Whoa, Hunter. Well, I mean, it's a lot of fun, but I'm saying I don't think I can say on. Yeah, no, actually do it if you can. It's very fun. Uh, <laughs> and I downloaded Sims 3 um, for free. And I was like, what the heck Like, can you do in this game? But I was bored. I started playing. I was like, this is the stupidest game ever. Like, it's just you and you're just living life. But then I discovered the unlimited money hack. Mm-hmm. Then I discovered you can just build whatever you want. I used to have a program on my computer called Cheat Engine. And you basically what it what it allowed you to do was scan a game file. It only worked for games that were offline because if it was online, then that database was being backed up by more than just code. There was an online server. So yeah. for offline games, though, let's say I'm playing a game and there's a health bar. So I would if let's say my health is at 100, you would enter in 100 in the, the scan thing. It would scan for any data value that said 100 and then you would take damage. 
and it would go to 86. So now I would scan a second time for anything that changed from 100 to 86, and you would keep narrowing in until you found that data value, and then you could do things, you could change it. So if I was scanning for like my currency in that game, I could give me any number of it. Or if it was a health bar, you could freeze it at a number. So you could live That's forever. Cool. It was incredible. But yeah, so once I discovered building in Sims, because I was like this close to never playing Sims again, because I was like, this is so stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're like, you're literally just going to, going to work every day. This is the most boring game ever. Then I discovered building in Sims. And then yeah. it was all I played for like a year and a half straight. Because I, I would building. just, I would just build a like massive house yeah. and like plan everything out. And like you could uh, put different cheat codes so it didn't limit where you could play stuff. So like, because like in Sims, you had to have it in like little blocks. Uh -huh. So like a plant couldn't actually go in the corner. Mm -hmm. But right. then if you use whatever cheat code, you could actually put a plant in the corner. And so you could like build and design the inside of a house. So much fun. Yeah. And I then I would just do it. And then once I built it, I would just like walk around it and be like, this is so cool. And then destroy it and build another one. And then <laughs> the final like icing on the cake was I decided at the beginning of a summer, I was like, my goal this summer is I'm going to build an exact replica of my parents' house. <laughs> and so I did nice. is I took a, uh, this is like, we're talking like 10th grade, 11th yeah. grade, but I was bored out of my mind during the summer because I would play basketball like three days a week. And other than that, I had nothing to do. And, um, if I had found disc golf, then I would have been a slightly above average. Um, <laughs> I would just take, I took a piece of graph paper because Sims was all in squares mm -hmm. and I estimated a foot, like Scale. each one was a square foot. So I was like <laughs> a foot's a square. And so I'd walk into each room and walk it off and then draw it on the graph paper and then draw exactly where the furniture that sounds was like, in each room. This sounds nice. like some very fun, like boredom buster type stuff. Oh, it was great. Well, <laughs> it, sounds, took, it took an eternity to yeah, do. Very so it was fun. like multiple days and I had like blueprints in my yeah. parents' house, like each level. Dang. And then that's I the thing where your parents walk in and are like, what is this kid doing? Like, yeah. I used to have stuff like that where I would be, if I ever, if you ever saw me playing a video game and I had a notebook out as well, that's when you knew it was getting real. Yeah. <laughs> and so then once I had like my blueprints of everything in my parents' house that like even like the, the pool, all of it, I had drawn out the exact scale. Then I bought the property on Sims and then just started building. And like the toughest part was getting the roof right because like you could. Oh, yeah. But it worked great. How and proud then of it were you? Was I was very like you like even I even did the landscaping the same. Oh, my. Like gosh. if you looked at it, it was my parents' house. Like you that could show it crazy. to anyone. That like had been to my house and they'd be like, yeah. I wish I could still see it. What it was incredible. Was it on? My old old mm. MacBook. Damn. I just realized with that cheat engine thing, one thing I never. T my brother and I used to play this game called Terraria, and Terraria is a heard of it. It was a phenomenal game, and the game, um, it was like a two D. Like people compare it to Minecraft, but it's not because it's more of like a boss beating game. Like you're beating progressively harder bosses as so you go. So it actually has like a point to the game. Yes, um, and. The hardest boss in that game, I believe it's called like the Moon Lord or something, or at least that's what it was called at that time. And it's darn near impossible to beat. Like it, it takes some, it is very hard. But I had, the, I froze my health bar or I had it so that if it got below a certain point, it would just go back up to 100. And I never told my brother. That's funny. And we were playing, like he had a PC in his room, I had one in mine. So we were playing remotely even though we're living in the same house, like great stuff. Um, and he just dying over and over again. And I'm staying alive the whole time. And he just keeps coming back. And he's like, how are you not dying? And like, I never told him and he doesn't listen to this. So, I mean, he'll still not know. He still won't know, but yeah, that's, 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 that's how I stay that's alive. Hilarious. Just older brother. That's so funny. Right there. My brother, um, cause like I, in middle school or something, I was too young for my parents to let me play GTA, Grand Theft Auto. Oh, yeah. I love GTA. But my brother wasn't. So mm -hmm. my brother had Grand Theft Auto and could play, but then like I couldn't play with him. Yeah. And so, cause like Jimmy and I always played games together. We played like Diablo, Badlands, Call of Duty, every game we played, we played together. And so when he got Grand Theft Auto and I couldn't play, cause like I started playing Halo when I was like 10 and that mm -hmm. was a stretch for my parents, obviously, but uh, it was a fun game. So, and you didn't really see blood. It looked like jelly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Grand Theft Auto, my parents were like, absolutely not. Like, you're not playing. Mm -hmm. It was like, they almost didn't let my brother get which it. Which one which was that? Just, it was early G Grand San Theft Andreas Auto. or? Maybe. I have no idea. I Liberty never played City. it. Um, and so Jimmy was like, this game's so much fun, Hunter. You would love it. I need to figure out a way to, that you can play Grand Theft Auto. So he like researched and found a game called Mercenaries. And Mercenaries. I think I've heard of that. If you took Mercenaries and entered a bunch of cheat codes, it just unlocked it. And because like Mercenaries was supposed to be like this like story game, 
where like yeah. you had to do kind of like Grand Theft Auto where like there's a storyline. Mm-hmm. But the difference was Grand Theft Auto, you don't have to do the story. You can just like, yeah, go free. And that's what my brother liked doing. It's like just driving around, yeah, doing sure. whatever the heck you want him. Sure. Mercenaries wasn't like that. But if you put enough cheat codes in, it turned it into it. Okay. Where it was like this free world game minus, you know, the Grand Theft Auto stuff that my parents wouldn't want to be playing. Mm-hmm. Sure. So Jimmy bought... Respectfully so. Yeah, yeah. So Jimmy bought Mercenaries, then put all the cheat codes in. It was like, hey, we Dude. can play this together now. So now you can, like, we can upgrade cars, steal cars, whatever, like, just free world game. My and so then we played the heck out of Mercenaries. I but, like, you I couldn't explain see, it to someone because, like... I see that. Like, I you couldn't explain it to someone because, like, we weren't playing Mercenaries. Yeah, we were playing yeah, yeah. Grand Theft Auto in a different world. What mm-hmm. system was that on? Xbox 360. So say, I have a PS2, so they probably made it for that. They might have. I, I think I might have played that. I think video games went massively downhill once the cheat code era stopped because, like, when games were, like... If you were playing a game and you could literally go to the menu and there was a spot for cheat codes by name, yeah, like that was a beautiful era. Well, also of just video like you games. went to the menu and you didn't do anything, but you start hitting the D pad yeah. and then you like finish it and just like a and notification pop up, up and you're like what? And it's like this unlocked. Like, and like some yeah, <laughs> some games were so obvious about it and others weren't. And like some games, the cheat codes were like yeah, the combinations that were so hard to remember. Yeah. But then you get them down like muscle memory. But man, that's dude. like mercenaries. You would go to the menu and then you'd, look this you'd, game up. you'd enter the cheat code and it wouldn't tell you anything, but you'd exit the menu and there's a helicopter next to you. And you're like, crazy. oh, heck yeah, it worked. That's crazy. Yeah, mercenaries is very fun. Let's see. There mercenaries PS. I used to know. Was a it cheat Mercenaries code? Playground of Destruction or this two? One. This uh, one. This is, this is Xbox. No, then it's so this it's. One. Oh, you said you had it on a 360. I had it on the 360. Mercenaries, World in Flames. Let me see the cover of it. <laughs> I can um, look it up. Right. Okay. That's not what I'm thinking of. I've never even heard of this game. That's what I'm saying. It's like the game itself wasn't popular, but once you use all the cheat codes and unlocked it, you could just drive. So, like, the whole it I, just made it like a. It was like there was world. no. Yeah. Like, there was no goal. You could, Incredible. like, increase money and this buy cars, game, whatever. This game has a 3.9 out of 10 on IGN. Yeah, no, the game, that's what I'm saying. It's like, the game itself <laughs> sucked. Yeah. But once you unlocked it, it was just Grand Theft Auto <laughs> minus the, like, <laughs> bad stuff of Grand Theft Auto that, that you wouldn't so want a middle schooler any, I mean, well, in the era, like, back then, like, open world games were not really a thing. So, like, any game that did have open world... It's like with, like, uh, when Skyrim came out. So I I never got into Skyrim. Well, here's the... Skyrim tried. is such a cool game, but I never got into it because by the time I was in, like f- kind of like learned about it and wanted to get into it, I was years past its release, so the graphics were outdated. Um, but if and when, because I think they've already announced it, a new one comes out, I think I'll probably was try Oblivion and get into it. Skyrim or is that separate? That different? What was Oblivion? No, I, I'm not even sure. Skyrim is um, the Elder Scrolls. Is like the Elder, you one. know, my brother and I played. There might be a Skyrim called Oblivion, like an older one. I just can't remember if it, they're also no, yeah, Elder out. Scrolls Four Oblivion. Okay, so that, that was Skyrim. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what all the names of them are. Yeah, Elder Scrolls was Oblivion, which was Skyrim. <laughs> okay, that. okay. Jimmy and I tried it, and Jimmy kind of liked it. It's a very I never cool, got into. It's it. a very complex and cool game. That's like, when around that time is when we found. Uh, Borderlands, not Badlands, Borderlands. Mm, I don't know what I said. Yeah. We played Borderlands because Borderlands, what was so cool is Borderlands, you'd beat twice. Oh. So you'd beat it and you'd get to like whatever level your first time through and then you'd restart and the storyline would be the exact same, it'd be the exact same thing, but all the all the uh, people you're fighting and everything leveled up with you. So the so difficulty increased with you. So however far you got, you'd restart the game and you'd stay at that difficulty. Oh, that's cool. So like if you were level 75 and you had whatever guns and stuff, um, you'd restart with that. And you'd go through a second time and level up. So then you would unlock even more stuff. So you just keep going. But you already knew exactly what to do. Yeah. You can only do it twice. You okay. beat it twice and then you'd have to restart. But did my brother play, and I beat it so many times. Did you ever play Fallout? That's yeah. Another, that's another game that I never really played that people like obsessed over. I never, again, I didn't get, su- my brother got really into that one. Yeah. He got like the deluxe edition and had the little like Fallout bobblehead and stuff. They're about I never to, got super they're about to, I mean, they keep delaying it. I think it may even be delayed to the holidays yeah. at this point, but they're this, they're making an open world Harry Potter game called Hogwarts Legacy. But it sucks. It, I mean, I mean, if you don't like Harry Potter, yeah, it probably would suck. But it, that game may, it's going to start getting really, in- like I have, had no reason to buy a PlayStation 5 whatsoever because the games at this point haven't really been made for the next-gen consoles yet. But once the games start, like, I think next year, and the new NCAA football game comes out next year, only game I want right now 
is the PGA 2K23. That, that game sucks. It doesn't. The graphics look bad. Everything about it looks bad, but I love a golf game, and it's got Tiger Woods on the cover again. Oh, the, you're talking about the new one when it comes 2K23. out? 2K23. Yeah, I'll, yeah, that one hasn't come out yet. Which, no, they just announced it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they announced they announced that they bought the rights to Tiger Woods a while back. Yeah, but now they're like they've shown the, the coverage, thing, the cover. They did the. Um, is there a gameplay? So they did a commercial for it. Oh. And they had like Nade Shot, uh, Shooter oh, McGab, and all this stuff I didn't in know it. That. But then it would like show a glimpse of the gameplay. Yeah, it still looked, finicky. looked awful. So here's what no, happened. no, it didn't look finicky. Just the graphics didn't. Well, the graphics looked like NBA 2K13 or 14. What 2K did? So there was a game, like the golf game, and like back in the day, the Tiger Woods EA Sports golf games were incredible, so darn good. And then once Tiger left, like split with EA because of all his controversies, the game slowly got worse. To the point where the last one EA released was a, called Rory McIlroy PGA Tour. It was still fun, and it looked really good. Like, the graphics were really good, and the mechanics were really good, but it was a lackluster game overall. There wasn't a ton to it, and it was really easy. Um, and then there was this game called The Golf Club, and that game was on Steam. It was only for PC, and it was a game that had a lot of intricacies as far as what you could do in the game, but the game engine and graphics weren't that great because... It was lower budget than like 2K or EA would have. Yeah. 2K bought that game out and they polished it a little bit, but that's the game you're playing when you play 2K is the golf club with a little bit better graphics and they and they revamped some stuff, but like that's the game that they bought. So, but I've heard is that EA is going to make another golf game to compete with the 2K series. So that is going to be very interesting because uh, yeah, golf games haven't really been fun for me in a while. See, I've always had fun with golf. But I, I know. Well, they're fun, but like, it for me, like, like the the new two K games, they play fine. Like they play semi realistic, and there's a lot to them. But the swing animation, the sounds, the feel of the game aren't super authentic. So that's what gets me with them a little bit. What I always loved is like, you could get. I forget which PGA Tour I had. Official announcement trailer. But I had a slightly older one. Um. And you could get so good at it so quickly because um, it like wasn't that hard, and to get like the spin and stuff down because like, you could change the spin midair, whichever one I had. So like yeah, after that you was the hit, Tiger Woods games, you could change. The yeah, spin after there. you hit, just like ramp the. You back knew spin. like oh, I way over hit that and ramp the backspin or like top spin, um, and so you, I could shoot like seventeen under like every time without yeah. fail. And so you just mm. go to a PGA Tour event and just bully them. It was it was great. What was that? Heck? What was that? Not I don't me. know. It was my Siri saying that something just got done. I hope it didn't just send people in the text com- I saw the first comment on this was like, this looks like PGA Tour 2K21 with, with Tiger Woods in it, which I do well, worry. Well, like when you see the graphics, they suck. Well, yeah, I'm curious to see if they suck as bad as. There it is. <laughs> no, that doesn't look that bad. I used to. On, on the full screen, it looked pretty rough. I mean, that that little. Yeah, that looked, that looked pretty similar to. Uh, but like. I'm okay. I want to play it. October. This weekend, I'm going to my That's parents' house again. I'm excited. And I'll buy I'm going to... I'm going to buy it. Uh, the, this weekend, when I go to my parents' house again, I'm going to grab um, their Xbox because now they packed it up and it's just in my dad's building now. Is it Xbox what? One. Nice. And so uh, I'm going to take we that. We have an Xbox One here. We do. We never use it. We need to buy a PGA for that. Yeah. Lunch breaks. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could. Um, but like my favorite, I never really, I never bought games for the Xbox. Like we, the only games we owned were like, uh, were like three different Call of Duties and GTA. And that was like all we owned for the Xbox because that we literally, X, the Xbox to us was just a zombies machine. It was just to play zombies, uh, with me and my dad and my brother-in-law. And, um, but then we got GTA and my whole life, I just wanted a GTA game. I just didn't know it yet. Because, like, me and my friend used to play, like, whenever we were really little, used to play this four-wheeler game where you could do, like, a free world type thing and that. But I was just, like, always, like, man, I wish I could get off the four-wheeler and, like, punch that guy or something. <laughs> and uh, and then yeah, open world game, finally, man. whenever I was, like, way too, like, way past when everybody else was introduced to it, I was introduced to GTA Five and on another friend's Xbox and I played it and I was like this is the most fun I've ever had in my life this is what I've always wanted in a video yeah. game and so I told my dad about it and then we got GTA 5 for our Xbox and then me and my dad would just sit for hours just destroying the city in mm-hmm. GTA and it was so funny watching my dad like 
that might be the only like you know how when you like switching off games like one player games and you just kind of sitting there just ready for it to be your turn. Whenever it was my dad's turn, I had no problem just sitting there. No, watching. it's fun. It's fun. It's to just watch. like my dad playing GTA is the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. But those were the <laughs> only games that we that we owned. I would do a ton of free demos, um, like that. I would download demos le- like every day of the week. But I used to play the Skate Three demo like nonstop. And, uh, but there was a cheat code where like whenever you had like three seconds left of the demo, it would pop up on the screen. If you like hit the menu button and did all these things, then it would ex- like make your demo unlimited to where you could oh. like, you didn't have a time limit anymore. That's sick. The problem was though, is that every, it also made it to where you could go outside of the demo boundaries and like go to the rest of the game. What the heck? But every once in a while you would like hit a glitch and just like fall through the floor and like never stop falling in the air and you'd have to restart your Xbox. That's funny. <laughs> it was nice. Funny. Yeah. I but remember, um, when I was in, I think it was like when I first got into college, my brother-in-law was still in high school. I don't even know if Liz and I were married at the time. Um, but my future brother-in-law, if we weren't, was still in high school and he wanted the new GTA, whichever one that was, probably five or I don't know which one came out. Mm-hmm. Five was like 2013 at this point. Like it was a long time That's ago. Crazy. Could have been yeah. that. It's I could have still been in high school. It's been around for almost a decade. Whenever, so no, because he would have been in middle school then. Is that the latest one? Yeah. That is crazy. The That's other the one was one. It's even still really good. It might have been that, that one, but which, I mean, it had to be that one, but I don't know if it was brand new or whatever, but whenever he wanted it, his parents told him no. Mm-hmm. And he told me, he's like, I need you to talk to my parents for me. I was like, what do you mean? And I'm like, he's like, I want Grand Theft Auto, and I need you to tell them that like it's not as bad as they think it is. Oh, it is. And it so, is. It, you can, and yeah, so I was like, is. I was like, okay. I was like, if you bring it up, I was like, I'll vouch for you. And he's like, all right, deal. So I came over to their house. He brought it up, and his mom and dad were like, you can't, like, we've seen it. Like, no, you're not playing. I was like, well, I was like, it really just depends, like, how much you trust him. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, well, like, it's bad if you want to make it bad. I was like, but. I was like, knowing Kent, he'd probably play it the way I play it. Cause like I had Grand Theft Auto at that point. I was like, and if you just want to run around, punch some people, steal some cars and like just destroy the city. I was like, the game's not that bad. Like it's just an open world game. You just have fun with. I was it's like, only as bad as you are. Yeah. I was like, it's as bad as you want it to be. I was <laughs> yeah. like, so I was like, if you're worried about like, I was like, if you trust him, then the game's not gonna be bad. And they're like, are you sure? I'm like, I'm positive. I was like, I, I play the game. Like the game's not bad unless you, you want it to be like, you, you don't have to do all the like you know, hooker, stripper, all that stuff, or like drugs, all that stuff. Yeah, man. You don't have to do all of that. But like, obviously it is in the game. And they're like, I just don't know if I want to expose them to it. I'm like, I fully get it. I was like, I was just, I'm just saying I have it. And like, it's fine. You're it's and so, so then, bro. then <laughs> so like funny. a week later, Kent texts me and he's like, yo, it worked and sent me a picture of him holding Grand Theft Auto. Sent, sent you a picture of him <laughs> buying hookers in the game? No, <laughs> he, he played it for a while. He played it with his cousins online and they would just... Do what everyone does with Grand Theft Auto. You just people, run around, steal some cars. I'm just saying. Just people do I'm like just the saying. There's like on there. at the end of the day, your argument for your kid can be, you know, the game's only as bad as they are. But you, <laughs> it's well, it wasn't for my kid. Oh, I know. I, I know. No, I know. No, I'm not talking about you. It's, I just think it's so funny. That it's like, yeah, but like you don't have to do those things. Well, he's gonna be in his room alone playing the game, <laughs> <laughs> and he is a high school boy. Well, no, it was on the. Uh, their Xbox, he didn't have a TV in his room. They had one TV in the house, and it was in the mm-hmm. living room. Now, he oh, would play okay. it till like, 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So, same, same thing. That's how like, all our, our Xbox was on our living room TV. I didn't even have it. I didn't have a TV in my room growing we up. Had, um, I only watched TV in the living room. Basically, what would happen at our house was whenever my dad would upgrade the living room TV, the old TV, well, the first old TV was like that, one that, like, everyone had. That was, like, the massive TV that had, like, the speaker underneath. It was just, like, this wide yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I'm talking about like, like just oh, yeah. hideous thing mm-hmm. that one went to the basement after that TV the next one was like a flat screen but it mm-hmm. still had like that big back to yeah. it uh, progressively as my dad got modern more modern TVs that TV would go upstairs to what at the time because like at that time my si- by that point my sister had moved out so we had three bedrooms my sister had moved out and it was just me and my brother uh-huh. so the third bedroom got turned into our game room Nice. And by game, I mean video game room. Yeah. That was it. So it would just, whatever TV my dad upgraded just got put in that room with our Xbox. Nice. And that was it. And so we just played Xbox on that. Like, so we had it in a separate room and we just played on that because we didn't have TVs in our room growing up at all. Um, yeah, never. Uh, and then we had the game room, played that. And then the um, massive TV, they actually just got rid of like three years ago because that was what the Wii went on. We got a Wii 
and we wanted it in the basement because there's a lot more room for we activities down there and so we put it on that big tv that like you turn on it was like yeah and like static yeah graphics were awful but man was it fun to play Wii on what that. is let's go let's go what, what would be your let's say top top five consoles of all time like uh, personal or like personal okay personal okay. like so like Nobody needs to roast each other like this is like nostalgia is obviously going to play most of the part of this because like if you didn't own a console, you're not going to put it in your list. So for me, it's really it's, it's actually a really hard list. <laughs> no, I just say it out loud. I don't I think I got I, mine. I think I got first. mine. I think. Yeah, go ahead. Huh? All right. No, I'm going to go from five to one. Yeah. Number five is a PS3. Mm-hmm. My brother had it. I my, well, we technically like both played it, but it was my brother's console didn't play it much. The only reason he got it was for, I think, Forza was only on PlayStation yes. 3, mm-hmm. something like that. That's the whole reason he bought it. Or maybe Assassin's Creed, too. No, I said, yeah, it would have been Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. Forza was only on Xbox. No, then what's the other racing game? <sighs> I, don't I don't know. know. Anyways, there's know. a few games that are only on PlayStation. That's the whole reason he bought it. And that's what Rock Band was played on. Mm-hmm. So PlayStation 3, great system. That was that. Xbox 360 is number four for me. That's what I did most of my gaming on. But if I was going to go back, I wouldn't choose to play it right now. Yeah. I would choose to play the three I'm about to say in front of it. Um, but Xbox 360 was like the console for me. Then number three, the GameCube. Okay. Mm. Heavily overlooked. We played yes. a lot of GameCube games. Mainly, that was when... Um, I think that was like the next few Smash Bros. came out on GameCube. And that's... We played the heck out of those. GameCube was very fun. Uh, number two, Game Boy Advance. That was going to be my number two um, as well. Very, I mean, I played the heck out of Pokemon, all, I mean, everything. GameCube Advance, and once we got the GameCube Color, whew, that was like next level <laughs> stuff. That was crazy. Like the game, original Game Boy or Game Boy Advance, I forget which one you had to like plug the light into. Yeah. To be able to see the screen. Yeah, yeah. What type of technology was that? <laughs> that makes no sense nowadays looking back, but in like sitting in the back of the car with my light plugged in, it made sense then. And then number one is Nintendo 64. No, your your it. list is way almost too nostalgic. Identical to mine. Goldeneye, 007, uh, Mario Kart, um, Donkey, and then Smash Donkey Bros. Kong Country. I didn't really play much Donkey Kong. I love Donkey Kong. Those three were like our games. Smash Bros. We still have it hooked up to the projector in my parents' basement. Mm. Nintendo sixty four, mm. and like at Christmas, Thanksgiving, some time of the year, it gets turned on, and we're down there playing Smash Bros. on the N sixty four. There's mm. nothing like it. My list is so similar. Um, my number five is probably Copycat Connor. Yeah. Right. Well, you guys have way older systems on your list than mine. Cause like, I mean, your older brother was way older than you. So like that, I don't. Yeah. And my sister too. And your sister. So like, I, cause like I grew up uh, real young. I played the Atari and Sega real young. I, I mm-hmm. did play a Sega for a and while. And I remember the really Sega I had to, um, it like broke and me and my brother, I was like five and he was like 11, but we took it apart and like fixed it. And it was like the coolest feeling ever. Yeah. I think my number five is going to be a I'm gonna say PlayStation three. What I would just, ah because I just thought about the PlayStation No, I don't care about the PlayStation four. PlayStation three, because that's what like whenever I was a kid, like the my best friend that I hung out with, he had a PlayStation three that whose house I would go to every single day. So we played a ton of games on PlayStation three. Um, and then number four is probably the Xbox 360 because that's what I played a ton of games at my house on, like with my dad. Um, and then number three is the Xbox One probably because I because I continued to play games on that. Basically just took the place of our Xbox 360. And I never progressed past the 360 and PS4. I it, never got anything newer. It never, it didn't. I don't remember. I don't remember the Xbox One really. PS3 the Xbox Three Six are the same. Xbox One, but didn't PS the same. PS Four came out when the Xbox One did. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, we never got the Xbox. Xbox one. Series X is the newest one. I know that's the, the Xbox newest. One. Somebody thought the PS. I, I never even realized it came out the exact same time. The Xbox One didn't feel really any different yeah. than the Xbox Three Sixty. The only difference was we got the we got the Ring of Death on the Xbox Three Sixty. So I never had, had to deal one. with that. Luckily, the jump from. Oh, oh, I got we. My brother moved out. Sorry to interrupt your list. There you My go. brother moved out, um, and I ended up getting... The 360 came out with... Not a 360 Pro. 
but like it was a new version of the 360. Mm-hmm. Remember that? I remember what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It was like more slender. It didn't have the hard drive yeah. on top. Yeah. The hard drive went in it, and it was like dead quiet. It's like when they make us. They made like slim versions of stuff and whatnot. Because like I feel like it was the Xbox Pro. Because they Xbox were newer. They Pro. were newer versions of the PS3 I look that and up. the PS4. As but well. when There's he a moved PS4 out, Pro. I think I have the PS4 yeah. Pro. That's what I have at my house. You can play 4K with it. Um. Gosh, what did I buy? This. What is this? Oh, it's just, I think it's just the new Xbox 360. Yeah, they, I think just, just they re-released just it. made updated versions yeah. of things. Yeah, so when he moved out, I bought that one. Mm-hmm. And that one I still have at my house. But that one, they the big thing was they got rid of the red ring of death. Like, you couldn't get it. Mm. What it meant was they took the red LEDs out. <laughs> so, like, the exact same problem could happen, that's but you hilarious. couldn't, you physically couldn't get the that, red ring of that's death. A, I remember it being that, like, if you got even an uh, even number of like sections of the ring then you were good you just needed to wait a little bit and it would fix but if it had odd numbers it was dead completely it's just so it's such a weird system but then my number two and number one are the exact same my number two is the game boy advance because i played that a ton when i was younger but i played weird games on it like i had this disney game where you were a skateboard you skateboarded with disney characters so like i would be like pumbaa from lion king that sounds hype on like a tree bark skateboard yeah very but you were doing kick flips on half pipes and stuff it was awesome um and then uh my number oh. one is the nintendo 64 because i played a ton of mario what was the the mar what's the mario where you like it's more like a first person game super mario super galaxy. Ma- yeah super mario uh we played i not played galaxy a, not galaxy because galaxy came like oh, ds era super but uh Super Mario. It was probably it was probably like the first Super Mario or whatever, where you could, that was the first um, like free world game I had ever played because in that game you could just wander around and just it, that game was so much fun. To I would make. like to change my number five from okay. the PS3 to the PS2 because when you started talking, Tony yeah. Hawk Pro Skater yeah. was on uh, PS2 and PS2 is where we were introduced to Guitar Hero, and PS2 is where my brother discovered he could write a game on his computer, burn it to a CD, and play it on the PlayStation 2. Yeah. So he made his own Guitar Hero. What? With all of our... F- yeah, it was crazy. Big time. He made his own Guitar Hero with, like... Because, like, at the time, we liked, like, Family Force 5, and I forget what other bands, they weren't on Guitar Hero. Yeah. And it, you couldn't... I don't think you could buy songs yet on, like, the old Guitar Hero. They didn't have like you uh. buy songs. And so he went on his computer... And wrote a whole new Guitar Hero, <laughs> what? and burned it. Yeah, onto That's a CD, crazy. and we play it. He could put whatever song, and you basically whatever, whatever he, however he did it on his computer, you would just he would just put the pick where the things went in accordance to the beat. So he like literally wrote like what you had to play, and so he like wrote it for the guitar. So then we could just play whatever songs we were actually like listen to and like. That's sick. That is that so was PlayStation crazy. 2. And it, we ended up breaking that PlayStation Two because like he once he started learning, he could do stuff like that. Then like he wanted to keep going, and so he mm-hmm. started like modding the PlayStation Two to try to like make it oh run gosh. faster. And I forget what the next thing was, but there was something that he went too far, and we couldn't. It just didn't work anymore. Dang. But PlayStation Let's Two, see. ours like had a clear case on it. Oh, that's. And cool. I remember we broke something to where like the laser that read the CD, the disc, was shining through, mm. and because it was clear case, and so it was like when you put the before when the disc was out, you had to like make sure you didn't look at that laser. <laughs> it was very man. PlayStation 2, I forgot about that. Actually, that Xbox 360 probably goes to five. PlayStation 2 goes to four. Mm. Dang. Um, my list is a, little, is a little bit different. I didn't. I played like I played briefly Game Boy Advance and N64, but like not really. Like I didn't own those systems. Um, oh, I, the Wii is as far down as possible. Oh my! No, I love the Wii. Wii it's is not on my num- list. I didn't have Wii nostalgia. Is my number five spot. Everybody has nostalgia for the Wii, and that's yeah. why they like it. I don't have any nostalgia. I can just see it for what it is, and that's crap. At the it's time, it wasn't. Crap. At the time, and it wasn't. Crap. I know. I know. At the time, it wasn't. This is but why. Well, I got it reasons, too late. There's two reasons why the Wii isn't crap. Number one, it was the first thing. Well, not the first of its kind, but it was the first thing yeah, to like make no. a good system using motion controls. You're right. And Wii Sports and like Wii Play were incredible games. Mario Kart Wii is arguably the best Mario Kart of all time. It's one of the better ones. It is. Um, I saw but Mario another Kart. reason that the Wii was incredible is because you could play GameCube games on it. So it yep. brought the GameCube back to life. And the GameCube was my number four system because it is super overlooked and super underrated. The controllers were I do awesome love Smash for that system. Brothers. It was you such get, a com- um, compact system. It was so small. The discs were even small, and it worked so perfectly fine. 
you could use GameCube controllers. I think you get an adapter to use the GameCube controllers on a N64. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that changed yeah. uh, Smash Bros. My, I always loved the Nintendo the Nintendo sixty four controllers. My number though. three system. They're so good. much fun. This is kind of an older one. My number three system is the PlayStation Portable, the original. Oh, one. the PSP. Heck that, yeah! But because I had one and it played. I always wanted. Did one. you ever it, play Twisted Metal? No, I played. I played old. I played that on the three sixty. I think. Um, but that system was ahead of its time. It played small discs and like it ran them really well. Very impressive system for its time. I played time. a lot of FIFA on that. On the PSP. I actually didn't have FIFA. I had a really? baseball game. I had street football was my big time. I, I played, played the heck lot. out of FIFA and Twisted Metal on a PSP. Um, my number two system, I don't have any from the 360 PS3 generation, although like I was a big PS3 guy, but I, that system had flaws. Um, but my second on the list, and this is close to my number one, is the DS Lite. The original mm. DS Lite was such a good system, and for so many reasons, all the games they developed for that thing were just so good, and the Biggest reason this is on my list is because many DS games, particularly the Mario ones, only one person had to own the game, and you could play through like a remote thing. Like you could play Mario Kart with your buddies if only one person owned the game, and that was yeah. so. That is so huge. That never happens. Like yeah, that was that, that was incredible. Like just one person had to have Mario Kart or Mario Party, and you could all play. Uh, Picto chat, like anybody, <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> DS Lite was sick. Very compact system, good battery life, like very good system for its time. Uh, my number one is the PS2 because that's the system that I played the longest during my childhood. I had, I the first game I played on that was Lego Star Wars, the original one. Oh my gosh, that's what got to um, be one of my favorite games of all time. I never yeah. got into the Lego games. It's I, so good, Lego I, Star Wars. I really only played the Star Wars ones, but I uh, I played like that's the NCAA only game I played football. on my DSi. NCAA football on my PS2, like I would sit down there for four hours in my basement. And the way I broke my PS2 was actually very comedic because I it stopped reading discs. I literally remember chucking it across my basement to try and fix it. <laughs> um, and it just wouldn't read discs. And then I learned after being sensible. I was a young kid. Let's keep this in mind. I learned after being sensible that you could unscrew it and fix the laser mm-hmm. um, that read the discs. So, and this is like a big thing for me because I'm probably, I mean, I can't be much older than like 11 or 12. I unscrew this. I don't even know what I used to get on the internet to look that up. I unscrew it. I clean off the laser. I'm pretty proud of myself. Like it seemed like I was doing everything right and I screw it back together and the LED to turn on the system, like normally it's red and then you turn on, it turns green. It wasn't even showing on. And I was like, what is going on? So I unscrew it again and surely... Sure enough, I had screwed through the ribbon cable that connected the power <laughs> LED oh, to no. Now, I was only like 12, so like I'm sure that this was obviously probably very fixable, just replacing that cable if you took it somewhere to fix it. But to me, it was just broken at that point. And I upgraded to the, um, to the PlayStation 3 not long after, but for a while there, for a good stretch of time, I was stuck playing on the Wii, which meant playing Madden for the Wii, which if you ever played Madden for the Wii, especially around like... Was that where you had to like actually run? No, but... So, like, Madden 10 was the one I had for Wii, which is the one that had Larry Fitzgerald and Troy Palmolo on the cover. And they, like, made the players look cartoonish. Yeah. And and you could, like, point at the player and throw it. It was a rough Madden experience yeah, for I a played, year there. I don't remember which Madden <laughs> I played. But one of the Maddens I played, you handed it to the running back. And there was two modes. One, you just used the joystick. You probably and you could were fine. Like actually run. The other you option was you went like tackles. this. Oh you my could gosh! Do that to yeah, and that was how you juked. You like juked left yeah, or right. Yeah. yeah. No, but, and that was, that was something. One thing I will say because I didn't have the PS3 or 360 on my list. I had a PS3. The 360 was a great system. I will say the jump from PS2 era to PS3 was way crazier than the jump from PS3 to PS4. Like that. The games, the difference yeah. in games from PS2, and it also... That's be- what happened with me. Also... I was X360, and when the Xbox One came out, all of my friends went PS4. Yeah. And cross-system compatibility wasn't a thing. Yeah, no. So I changed from an Xbox player to a PS4 player. Yeah. And that's w- that's why I never had Xbox Well, and the player. other thing is, too, when the PS2 jumped to, like, PS3, that's when HDTVs were becoming yeah. a thing. So, like, the, it was like a double punch. That was a crazy jump. I remember, and when I first got my PS3, I was still playing it on my parents' only TV, that like only bigger TV they had, which was not HD. It was a very old TV. I was using like the red, yellow, green, or red, yellow, white connectors. And then they bought me a 720p HD 
TV, like a very tiny one from my room for Christmas one year. It was a huge deal. And I remember plugging it, my PS3 in that first time and changing it to high definition and my mind exploded. <laughs> I was like, this is what, like, this is what I was missing out What's on. What's funny to me is my, uh, it's crazy. When HD TV happened, my dad bought one finally. It was the and, funniest um, thing watching HD Everything was. Out. Like, you can see the snot running out of that, that guy's nose. The biggest thing was like <laughs> how, because like we had Dish and Dish at the time had like the normal channel had, and the HD Dish. channel. Yeah, I had Dish. And so you had like normal channel and you'd switch to HD and like we would we'll be watching like a football game. My dad would switch it to HD and be like, this is incredible. Like, look how clear their helmets are. And like still to this day, we'll like go down, because like, my dad now has like a 4K TV, I believe. Um, it, and we he just upgraded the projector in the basement. To, it was 720p. He just upgraded to 4K, and like we turned on the Super Bowl last year or something. And my dad like still hasn't wrapped his mind around <laughs> HD. As we turn on, he's like, I mean, it's like we're on the field with him right now. <laughs> and it's like it's so funny to me, like hearing him describe what like looks graphics was. But That's the really DS, funny. I never got. I owned a DS. Uh, DS was so good. The issue was I got so into Game Boy. And yeah. the biggest Game Boy game for me was Pokemon. Well, that was the other thing about the DS that was sick is that you could put freaking Game Boy games original, the, yeah. the original one yeah that system was so but good I had my Game Boy Advance still and I loved playing like Pokemon Sapphire yeah Pokemon Emer like I had all and the coolest thing about the Game Boy was like the Sapphire was like a see-through red uh yeah. Game Boy like loved mm -hmm. it but once I once I got the DS I didn't I was just like I'd rather play some on Game Boy yeah and then eventually the DS got where you couldn't play it and my brother t sold me on the 3DS because he bought the newest oh, Pokemon he's like 3DS, you gotta bro. get it dude the newest Pokemon <laughs> sick and I was like all right so I at that time I was in like college I think yeah I bought the 3DS to play this new Pokemon and I was like this sucks and all it made me want to do was find Pokemon Sapphire or Ruby yeah and buy a Game Boy Advance and just play that <laughs> and I was yeah like, they, like Pokemon vintage just never got better than Game Boy. Vintage in my gaming. Mm -hmm. I honestly like so I bought a PS2 a few months back and a bunch of PS2 games to kind of get that nostalgic feel. I still haven't been able to play it to its full extent yet because if those systems weren't built for newer TVs, so really you have to get buy like an older TV if you want to get it like the it to look right. Um, but really, what I want to do is play get it on that thing. No, it it still wouldn't work. Like it needs to be like a TV. Uh, that TV's got the like. Yeah, no, it, it can have the right connectors, but like I'm I, saying, that TV is pretty old. It like I researched it, like it has to be a TV that wasn't meant to even have HD functions at all. Like it, it's very weird. I forget what it is because it, it like stre it makes the game look just like a little bit blurrier than it should, which is uh, kind of sounds backwards, but that's just how it is. I don't know, but in any case, um, I really want to get like um old vintage like handheld games because i think like that would be more convenient to like oh take on a plane or whatever because like i have a switch but like i think it'd be fun to have like an old playstation portable a ds Lite, you know like a, a, even a game boy like, i would get into like that would be fun to collect yeah i could definitely like, i would buy a game boy color again right like, now you could get a ds Lite probably like uh, it's not at the point like i they, don't want to have to have the game boy that i have to have the light mm -hmm. to play yeah but uh or the game boy advance that like flipped open like I a, want a Switch. I'd play that. I think that a Switch... Switch is cool. I, I think Switch. Gabby and I would have really fun playing it. the Switch together. I thought that. And then I yeah. bought it and like we played it a little bit. I don't use it very much. No. We probably mine's, out, mine's out front. I the just most, left it here. The most yeah. gaming that Gabby and I have done since we got married was a few months ago. We played Mario Party. Mario Party's On fun. her Wii. And... Um, we played it for like three hours because we accidentally turned up the points to like way too many and so but we felt like we had to finish it so we literally played for like three three and a half hours we played mario party mario so like for the game. first hour we were like this is so much fun and then it got to the point where we were miserable we were at, we were like we were yelling at tv we were so upset that we were still playing this game but we felt like we had to finish it and we haven't touched it since i mean mario party was a great game mario party is a great game the Mario Party is a frustrating game. I will say the Mario Party for the Switch is nothing like the one some of the older I ones. I never bought it. I only played Wii. I'm never yeah. playing Mario Party again. But Mario Party is a I played way too much that one night. I will never well, play it. Well, it's again. a frustrating game because the way they m make that game is that you can win all of the mini games and lose every time. Yeah. Because you you can get unlucky with the dice roll or they hand out oh, like points at the end like stars for like the most random stuff ever like oh if you landed on the the most yeah. unlucky spaces here's a star like 
So what I used to do is I used to play Mario Party. On the DS, there was a game mode where you could just, it was called mini game mode, and it just, you only played a series of mini games, and mm-hmm. it just awarded points for that. So that's gotcha. what my brother and I would play, because then it took the luck out of it. Mm-hmm. But if you go into it just accepting that it's a game fueled mostly by luck, you'll have a better time, but oh, I used to get very <laughs> heated. Well, you can end the banter with this, because it's been, a, been an hour. I just went on Facebook, and someone posted these two Simon Lazat stories back-to-back, uh, like screenshot them next to each other and it's like all this drama and disc golf and there's Simon and Simon posted he had this like suction cup toy and he said I was playing with my son and during an attempt to entertain him with something silly I stuck this thing to my forehead for some reason my brain didn't think hickeys could exist on the forehead and then he took a selfie on the next story and he just has this big hickey square in the middle of his forehead that is so funny and he said I really hope this goes away before worlds <laughs> that is so funny oh my god that's hilarious that's incredible. Simon, it's, I feel like it's impossible to not like Simon. Simon's pretty funny, dude. All right, what noise we end him with? Uh, okay. A yawn. Uh, <laughs> uh. Frank, do you like um, Do you like your best like like Mario noise? Woohoo! That was, <laughs> that was really, really good. good. That was I so actually good. played Mario in Mario, the movie. Yeah? Yeah. Mario 3D. All right, you guys, I usually suck at this, so. Wow! Oh, I like that. You <laughs> that was went like for the that. Waluigi. <laughs> I don't know which one I'm going to do now. Do Yoshi. Yoshi! What? No. <laughs> what is hey, Yoshi? Hey, this part, there's no shame in this part. Okay? What does Yoshi do? I wasn't shaming. What does Yoshi do? He does like, it's like a voice, it's like a, vo- a nasally voice that he. But he says, says Yoshi. Name. He says his name in it. Like, no, I, 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 what I just did, I just did it poorly. I just can't think of any more Mario All songs. All right, that's going to do it. You do like, uh, like, plum, plum, plum. I'm going to do like, it's me, a Mario. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. That's you like banter. That? Did you like it? 